What's up guys, it's Mr. B, and today we're going to talk about Ohm's Law and the power formula. First, we're going to show you Ohm's Law, which is voltage equals current times resistance. Then I'm going to show you the power formula, which is power equals current times voltage. Once we figure both of those out, then I'm going to show you how you can take two of the units that you know of and figure out what the other two units are simply by using these two formulas. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and figure out Ohm's Law. So when we're talking about Ohm's Law, we're talking about uh, voltage equals current times resistance. And what we previously learned in our other units, when we're talking about the representation of voltage, we use the letter E. And when we talk about the representation of current, we use the letter I. And when we're talking about the representation of resistance, we use the letter R. So a lot of people, when they say Ohm's law, they say E equals I R. You will also see commonly that a lot of people say V equals I times R. So in either scenario, as long as you are plugging in the voltage where the voltage is supposed to be, the current where the current is supposed to be, and the resistance where the resistance is supposed to be, you're going to get the correct answer no matter what. So either way you say it, it's going to be Ohm's law. Now I say E is I times R, because E is for voltage, I is for current, and R is for resistance, and the formula is voltage equals current times resistance. So the reason we do Ohm's Law is because if you have two of uh, the units, you can figure out what the third unit is by doing basic math. And we need to figure this out because a lot of times you will know what the voltage is going to be because of the power supply you will know what the resistance is going to be because you use an ohmmeter and test the resistance but you usually don't know what the current flow is going to be so before you plug an item into the circuit you can do ohm's law and figure out what that current flow is going to be before you damage a component in the circuit a lot of components will come with their ratings already on and they on the component and they will tell you how much current flow they can handle so before you put an item into the circuit, you can do Ohm's Law, figure out how much current is going to flow through the circuit, and then determine if that item is going to work or if it's going to get blown out. So we have Ohm's Law for that purpose, but a lot of times you will also get the power rating on a component. So we need to figure out what the power rating would be. So you can figure out the power in your circuit by doing another formula called the power formula. And the power formula is power equals current times voltage. And I like to say power equals current times voltage. Some people say power equals voltage times current. But when you're doing multiplication, it doesn't matter if you put the voltage first or the current first if that's the only thing you're doing. The reason I say it that way is because then I can say P equals I times E, and it says pi. So it's an easy way to remember that the power formula is pi, power equals current times voltage. So you can figure out what the wattage is going to be in your circuit, and we say wattage because wattage watts is the measurement of power kind of like amps is the measurement of current and volts is the measurement of voltage. But we can figure out how much power is going to be in our circuit by doing current times voltage. And you can figure out both of these items by doing Ohm's Law first. Because if you didn't have current before, you can just do Ohm's Law, figure out what the current is, then you can take the voltage which you already have and the current which you figured out to then understand what the wattage is going to be in the circuit. And this is another scenario where you want to make sure you figure out what the power supply or the power is going to be in the circuit before you put a, a component into the circuit because the component will have ratings on it and it will tell you what the power rating is and then you can determine if it will work in your circuit. 
Another thing you need to understand is you can't do any of these formulas without the full unit. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people will get a unit like this where it is 25 milliamps. And if you're doing uh, a unit like this, this isn't a full unit because you got to remember amps is the full unit. So if you try to do a formula with milliamps in it, you're going to get the wrong answer. You have to convert this to the full unit before you can actually plug it into your formulas to get the correct answer. So since milliamps is converted to amps, what you could do is you could just move the decimal over three points and then you can understand that 0 0.025 amps is what you would do your formula with. So make sure you always convert to the full unit before you actually do the formula or else you're going to get the incorrect answer. So let's go ahead and I'm going to hook up a circuit in a moment, but I want to see if I can figure out the circuit before I hook it up. So I'm going to say E equals, and I know that the circuit's going to have three volts. Then I'm going to say I equals, I want to figure out the current in the circuit, and I don't know what the current is, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Next is the resistance. Now, I know that I'm going to hook up just a 10 ohm resistor and you would be able to test the resistance before you hooked it up and figure this out. But I know I'm gonna hook up a 10 ohm resistor. And then I also wanna figure out what the power is gonna be in the circuit because I'm gonna use a one watt resistor and I wanna make sure it can handle the amount of power in the circuit before I put it in. And I'll teach you all about the uh, power ratings on resistors next time when we talk about resistors. So I can start with what I do know and figure out what I don't. So if we go to Ohm's law, we have E equals I R. And I know that my voltage is three volts. And that will equal my current, which I don't know, multiplied by my resistance, which I do know. And if you do basic algebra here, you can figure out what the current flow is in the circuit. And we can cancel the 10 out on this side, divide the three by the 10, and then you will figure out what the current flow is. So if we take 10 and we divide it by 10, they will cancel out on this side, but what you do on one side, you have to do on the other. So we'll divide that by 10 over here, and three divided by 10 is gonna equal 0.3 amps. So the current is gonna equal 0.3 amps. Now that I've figured out the current and I have the voltage, I can figure out what the wattage is gonna be in my circuit, and then I can understand if my one watt resistor is gonna be able to handle the amount of power in the circuit. So, we go ahead and we do P equals I times E. Power, which I don't know yet, is gonna equal current, which is 0.3 amps, multiplied by my voltage, or my volts, which is three volts. And when you do 0.3 times three, you're gonna equal 0.9 watts. So my power is gonna equal 0.9 watts. And I have a resistor that is gonna be able to handle anything up to one watt. So now that you know that this is below one watt, the power in the circuit will be 0.9, I already know that my resistor is gonna be okay to plug into this circuit because it can handle the amount of wattage that is gonna be in the circuit. So now I know that my resistor is not gonna burn up. So let's go ahead and test this theory now and build the circuit. Okay, so now we have our circuit and I have my 10 ohm resistor here. I haven't hooked it up yet because I want to put my ammeter in there to test our current flow. I have my power supply here and I'm gonna go ahead and measure that power supply. I told you previously that we would have three volts at our power supply. So when I hooked it up, I adjusted the power supply to be somewhere close to three volts. And if you notice, it's at 3.03. .03. So it's not exactly three, so that means our exact number of 0.3 amps probably isn't gonna be exactly 0.3 amps, but it's gonna be pretty close. And I'm gonna pull this out, and I'm gonna measure the resistance of this item here. 
And I know it says already that it is 10 ohms, but there's tolerance when you have resistors. So I'm just going to test the resistor to see where it's at. So when we go and get the ohms, we test for our ohms. If you notice, we have 10.9. So it's got a little bit of tolerance. It's not exactly 10. It's more like 10.9. And since we have more resistance, what you'll notice with Ohm's law, when there's more resistance, the current flow will go down. So based off of that theory right there, we're probably going to be lower than 0.3 amps. I would assume that we're probably going to be somewhere around 2.7. So let's go ahead and measure the current flow. And I'm putting it in series with the circuit so it will travel through there. And if you notice, we're closer to 0.27 or 0.28, somewhere in that area, because we had a little bit more resistance than what we did our Ohm's law math with. But based off our theory, if you have more resistance, that means the current flow will go down a little bit. We go ahead and we figured out that our theory is correct when we did our Ohm's law. We also figured out that when you hooked up this one watt resistor, we wanted to see if it would be able to handle the amount of power in the circuit. And based off of our uh, math, we found out that there's going to be 0.9 watts when you figure out the voltage and the current. And we know that this resistor will be able to handle the 0.9 watts because it is a one watt resistor. So our theory was true. Everything added up. And that was Ohm's Law and the power formula for you. All right, well, I hope you learned something about Ohm's Law and the power formula today. And I hope you can use this in your electrical circuits. And I'm going to go ahead and see you next time.